in my studio. I'm Laura Sinadella and welcome to my studio here in Brookfield, Massachusetts. Today we're going to paint this dam that's behind me. If you want more information, you can find it on my website at www.artistlaurasenadella.com or you could go to the bvaa.org. If you're having any problems with my visual or my sound, please make sure that you mention that to us in the comment section below because I have Claudia. I am fortunate today to have Claudia sitting with me in my studio and she can um, bring in messages back and forth. And you know, the question, the worst question is the question that you don't ask. If you have any questions today, please be sure to ask. I'm going to talk kind of softly because I have a cough drop in my mouth. Um, and I don't want you to hear too much crinkling from the paper that I have and my supplies. I have a pile of supplies underneath the camera. I'm going to introduce you to not only myself, but I'm going to introduce you to some basic tips and tricks to doing oil painting. And I hope that you learn something today. Or I hope that I motivate you. Or maybe you get inspired to do something on your own. Don't do what I do. Do your own thing. Find your own path. Art is a great journey, and um, today I, I have behind me my board. This is my storyboard. Um, we were able to get the text to go the proper direction, I'm assuming. Um, please let us know if you see it. It should be a sign that says O-P-E-N. No, I'm not open, but I am live, and I'm coming to you live today for free in my studio in Brookfield, Massachusetts, along with the Blackstone Valley Art Association to help with the learning process and maybe this will help during the pandemic to maybe like waste your time sometimes I waste people's time I tell you that this is a painting demonstration and I'm talking more about myself than I am about you but please share in the comment section talk about yourselves if you guys have a question for instance today Lisa did a drawing and painting demonstration this morning she did a watercolor and a um, pen and ink and a pencil and she did tons of rend renditions of the Unitarian Church in Menden, Massachusetts. And we are fortunate that our art association is going virtual for you for free. You can learn from one of our artists as we share along on our journey to um, our you know, online art shows. Don't forget, we have a YouTube channel. Check us out at the Blackstone Valley Art Association on YouTube, or you could go to bvaa.org. And um, I hope that you do. Um, we just had a great pastel and a, a watercolor workshop, and you know, I've been coming live, and Luke has been coming live since the pandemic began in March. And we, um, are giving back but you know at times it, it, it's getting um, more and more difficult for me to to think to myself how long is this pandemic going to go on for but you know without you guys I wouldn't be where I am today I've been fortunate and I'm a disabled woman today but um, I have been fortunate to actually have art as a business for a while and it was pretty good and it was fun and I'm, and I'm glad that you're on this journey with me today here and again we're doing oil paints I use a palette and um, I strap it to my arm and I, I um, will put my paint on it and I'll explain to you what we're doing from time to time but what I'm doing right now is I'm checking out the sound if Claudia is paying attention she'll understand what I'm saying but um, I move around a lot so I want to make sure that the sound is not a problem when I'm doing that moving around thing because I have the new microphone that I'm using from the Blackstone Valley Art Association, it's um, wonderful. It, it, it makes my voice amplified so that I can speak pretty normal. And I, um, I'm going to tell you about this dam. It's in uh, Munson, Massachusetts, and I've been doing this thing where I like just drive around these roads in the back roads of um, these New England towns. And I've been taking photographs, and this year I, I did my fall drive through um, this area. And I was in Munson, and there was the Hampton Cotton Company. It was an old mill, and there was a dam there that used to um, run the power to the mill. 
and um, I found it very attractive, which I continuously do as I travel through Massachusetts. I've been taking a lot of pictures of old mills, and unfortunately, this mill here was um, later purchased by a, a company that made a cadmium, which was used to um, coat steel, and it would help um, the steel from rusting. And um, later on, they ended up using it in other products because it helped the pigment and the, um, the pigment and and the metals um, combined. Um, the cadmium worked out really well for oil paints, and that's unfortunately lately we've been trying to find replacements for those colors because. Um, that's what, you know, if you had a yellow, it was cadmium yellow, and if you had a red, it was cadmium red, and da 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 da. But it's been taken off the market, and um, we now know that it's hazardous. But I try to keep my products as least hazardous as possible, but I can't tell you that I'm 100% with it. I, um, I'm going to be painting a mural soon, and I think I'm going to paint it in the studio as long as. Um, everything works out okay with it. I'm going to try to position it properly back here. And um, I did this a couple of years back. I used this uh, step ladder thing and I painted it. It's a four foot by eight foot mural. And um, if you're interested, you know, if you're interested in anything, just, you know, painting socially, um, distancing. I have been going out with people painting, but we are at least six to eight feet away, um, or I'm not even anywhere near them. And um, we, for instance, we, we painted uh, urban sketching. I did um, with a couple of artists. We went and we did urban sketching in uh, downtown Uxbridge. And that you can find on YouTube. But again, I'm wasting your time and we're supposed to be here for painting. So let me tell you about this um, dam. So it was uh, closed for a really long time. It was abandoned by the Omega Company because um, there was way too many um, troubles with the chemicals that were in the um, river. They had to, you know, pay to clean up the river. But it's beautiful now, and it happened to be one of those things that attracted me during my fall drive through the area, and I want to share it with you. That's what I've been doing. I'm kind of uncomfortable about, like, for instance, um, I'm showing you all my tips and tricks, um, little by little. So you're going to have to check out all my videos, because, I mean, I go little by little. So, um... I have a, a bag in front of me. I told you it's a it's a pocketbook. Um, I have a, a lot of times I talk about my pocketbook, but um, it's great for um, travel and everything, you know. And now I have to attach a mask. I do have um, some other painting kits. Almost all my painting kits now contain masks and gloves. And it's unfortunately that's a responsibility that I took on as an artist. I stay away from people. I choose to go out and I photograph and I paint. But I do it where people don't really go. So um, I've been doing back roads, I told you. And uh, here in Munson, and this is um, called... Uh, let's find my um, paperwork again. This is called Bliss Street Dam, and it's located in Munson, Massachusetts. And um, it was built in uh, 1850 to power the mill. Okay, so Claudia says that the mic is making too much noise, so we're going to pull the mic up here. How does that look now? Better? Well, you know, we'll see. We'll see how it works. I'll talk kind of quietly and lower my volume. So this um, mill, if you, if you look it up, you can find all the information. I found it on Wikipedia, and um, it's Bliss Street Dam that we're interested in, and we're interested in it because I was out on a foliage ride, and I happened to come across this waterfall, which to me, a waterfall is not, um, yes. Okay, so I removed my mic again and I moved it down and let's see how that goes. So when I was out driving around, I told you when I was looking at these places, I um, came across this waterfall and I had been looking for waterfalls most of the summer if you follow along. You can find me in riverways or old dams and 
you know, um, there's great old buildings and old properties and so forth and so on. And um, this place here got in trouble for spilling into the Chickabee Brook. And um, I think it was the Quaybog. And Claudia can look that up for me. Um, it was the Quaybog River, and it killed a lot of fish, and it cost them tons of money, and um, they had to clear it in 2005. So now it's absolutely beautiful. It looks like a park, but it is closed to the public. Um, how I got a photograph of this is that I have a nice telephoto lens. And if you believe that story, I'll tell you another one. I like to walk on bridges that are like um, really tightly wrapped around the river so that I can get a really good image because one day I'm hoping to catch a heron or something really close up. I did one day with a friend of mine, we were in Hopedale and all of a sudden the heron came right up in front of us. So. Um, you can find me in um, the woods, uh, the rivers, the ocean, and um, all kinds of places. But right now, you're fortunate that I'm coming to you live for free on Facebook. I'm not sure how long I'm going to be doing that for. I'm not sure how long this pandemic is going to last. But um, I don't want to... Um, get into, into the, too much of that but please try to follow me on Facebook or you can you know reach me on my Facebook page um, my website is going to be coming up um, I keep talking about it I know you're all waiting for my store to open up I'm going to have a store and I'm going to have a, a website where you can um, watch all my blogs and uh, follow my travels because um, I'm hoping that my travels help you either motivate or inspire or like I said fill your time I, I talked about wasting your time there is no waste of time learning is a, a wonderful thing and you can do it at all different ages my father-in-law was in his 80s and he was still taking college classes so I don't know so why was I attracted to this I'm going to pull out my nice little um, stick so that I can point to you let's see how well we can see it in the camera but um, I I was attracted to this, to the shapes. There's some really good shapes in here, and it seems like a simple, rather quick drawing that we can whip up today. We're not going to be able to get all the detail in it, but we're going to get as much as we can get done today. And I'm going to go rather quickly, so if you have any questions, please, you know, stop me and ask. The worst question is the question that you didn't ask me, but, you know, you can always email me later. So if I were to go along here, I can pretend that um, the water line goes all the way across and I have a really nice big shape. Or I could take this into sections and I can work on one section at a time. Sometimes you can divide your paper into thirds and then you can divide it again into thirds. So this is an 18 by 24 print and this is a 16 by 20 canvas. I'm going to make it smaller because I wanted to do it for demonstration purposes. You don't have to do what I do at home. I want you to do what you do. And um, the best way to get to doing what you're doing is to continue doing it. And I recommend that you buy your art supplies um, in bulk, um, I recommend that you um, ask a lot of questions other artists are willing to share with you. Um, we as artists want to keep fine arts alive and I'm coming to you live today for free. Not because I'm wasting my supplies or anything because later on I could sell a painting like this. For instance, if anybody had any family members, I constantly hear the stories of family members of people who worked in these old mills. And this is one of those old mills where it employed many people in this area. And um, this waterfall was actually flowing, whereas a lot of waterfalls in Massachusetts right now are not flowing so much because there's a drought. It's been difficult for me to go like digging for waterfalls. And it doesn't have to be anything major. You can make anything look wonderful. You know, I have these pictures. Later on, I'll post it of the um, property across the street from here. And it's not a pretty site, it, but it's a pretty picture. And you'll understand what I mean by that. So here we are in this um, 
blank canvas behind me, it can be very threatening to a lot of people. I, I tell you, I'm going to help you break it down into small pieces and we're going to do it one workshop at a time because I can't come to you live free and give you all the information all at once. But what I can do is I can give you enough information today that you can walk away and I feel comfortable that you could paint something like this yourself because all it takes is a little bit of practice and um, some shape recognition, some color recognition. I keep spreading red paint. I hate um, how I do that. Um, so I have my rag. I'm going to um, quickly go through things. Like I said, I'm going to take a number two brush. Um, it's sort of a... I'm going to use a one round brush and I'm going to use a number two filbert and I need a flat brush. I'm going to use a number four flat brush and then I'm going to need a larger brush. I'm going to use a number 12 and then I'm going to use an even larger brush. I'm going to go for, um, let's say, Hold on one second. Over here I have some more brushes. So I'm looking for my um, flat brushes. I have this great brush. I have a few of them. Um, it's it's a, a hardware brush, but it works out really well with my hands. I have problems in my hands and my shoulders. Some of the techniques that I'm using today, I do not represent any companies. I do not represent any um, products. I'm going to tell you what I do, and I hope that it helps you do what you do. Um, I'm going to show you some basic things that I do, but I'm not going to go into full detail because if you want to go into full detail with me later on, you can check out some of my handbooks or maybe some of my workshops, or maybe we can Zoom together, but feel free to email me. I get back to you rather quickly. Um, I'm fairly open. I'm not doing too much right now. We're in a pandemic, and I've chosen to stay um, fairly, I told you, in and out of people. I do um, go to the markets and such, but I am fortunate to be disabled and I can go at other times. So um, I'm going to start my painting like I had mentioned before. We learned a lot about that cadmium products and um, I don't always use safe products. I'm not 100% safe. Um, I try to be. I do the best that I can do. Um, one of my products that I use is mostly beeswax, and if I could make my own paints, I would probably choose that as one of my mediums. I like that um, beeswax consistency, but today we're going to use a gel medium. It's like a Vaseline. We're going to use a Vaseline type gel. I'll put my palette up so that you can see it from time to time, and then you can tell me if it's color correct. Claudia would be able to recognize it over there on the computer. I'll um, hold my arm more steady as well, because that would help. I'm not very steady. That's one of those things that I um, struggle with, is that my arm shakes, and from time to time I have to um, adapt. And um, I'm not um, always good at adapting. So sometimes I have to be good at acceptance, and that's one of the things that um, I work really hard at. Um, I remember that there were other artists that had physical um, problems, and they were able to adapt. So I have had some art history in my time. I used to do these workshops for a uh, museum on art history. did some um, mass wildlife stuff. So those are the things that um, led me towards looking in rivers. I'm not necessarily like a historian or I'm not really um, into waterways so much. This year I tried to go kayaking and unfortunately wasn't able to rent. So um, I didn't buy a kayak yet. I wasn't sure about the dog, and now um, she's passed away. So, So 
So I'm starting with a very simple palette. I hope that you can see that at home. I'm going to use one more blue. I'm going to use a very dark blue. We have to um, cover a large canvas here. This is a 16 by 20, so I want to make sure that I'm using a fairly decent amount of medium. I'm using, I want to say they're equal amounts. Um, one of the things I can tell you is that I like to clean up with uh, Murphy's oil soap and put a little bit of it on my rag. What I'm doing right now is I'm setting up my um, sort of stage now because I'm going live on um, not only Facebook but this later on will be on YouTube so that you can fast forward and rewind and whatever. And um, I have a tendency to get absolutely filthy. Um, my shirt gets dirty. Uh, don't worry about it. It happens quite often. Um, you can comment on it because my whole art association, every time I went out and painted out, they were like, oh, Laura, you're covered with paint. And yes, I was. And, um, you know, that's just what it is. That's what I told you about acceptance. I like to use sensitive skin stuff. I told you I like to keep my products as um, healthy or as safe as possible. So I use um, baby wipes. I try not to use too much of paper towels right now and uh, baby wipes. But sometimes I don't know how to keep myself clean without using wipes all the time because I told you I'm very messy. That's one of the reasons why the palette is strapped to my arm. What is it? Um, I'm going to check with Claudia for a second because I think the, the mic needs to move to the other side. Let me check and see where we're at. I took out extras. Oh, so... Yeah, that's what I was talking about, is these mics are so sensitive. Claudia was telling me that the um, wipes were making a terrible noise. That's why I took out extras. So I'm setting up my stage in a sense. I was explaining to you that I put my palette here on my arm. And um, all it is is all the colors that were on my palette the last time I used it. And unfortunately, the red is not dry. Red is one of those colors that takes a really long time to dry. If you're interested in oil painting, you, you should probably have patience. Um, they say that it takes a year for a painting to dry, but I'm going to insist the paint. And I'm going to add some thinner to it, and I'm going to add some additive to it, and I'm going to assist the paint in drying. And I guarantee that it will be dry to the touch tomorrow because I'm going to teach you how to stain. Using my staining method, I'm going to continuously add layer and layer until this painting is less medium and more paint. So the last layer of this painting is going to take some time to dry. I would say it would take at least 30 days if you were to push on it. You might be able to push on the paint, but you know, um, I've been lucky that some of my paintings are dry in maybe a little over a week, but that doesn't mean it's fully dry, because there's another thing that they do is that when you varnish a painting, you wait about a year. If you're going to professionally have your paintings varnished, you should wait about a year, because you're not sure of the um, drying process, because the only way to find that would be to take a scalpel and to peel away at the layers. So. I'm going to today, I'm going to begin with these additives and I'm going to use this gel medium and they, they say that it should be dried to the touch by tomorrow morning. We're going to use it today which is, you know, in the afternoon and by tomorrow morning it should be fully dry. I'm going to show you my basic shapes for this painting. I want to quickly get this done. We have less than a few hours left. I don't know what time we have left but I'm going to rely on Claudia. Um, I cannot see my screen at this time. I have a computer monitor up on the other side of me and I can see myself now. Before we used to look into the camera and if you can see this open sign and you can read it clearly, it's because we changed our camera and we changed our lighting. We've added a ring light 
I'm not sure if the ring light is making a difference or if it's affecting anything. You might want to make some comments if you have a problem seeing. I'm willing to work with you. And hopefully today we learn something, or at least, you know, I wasted your time. So I have my dark blue, I have a true blue, I have a, a real red, a yellow ochre, a lemon yellow, a white, and a um, gel medium. And I'm going to use some Gamasol. I like recyclable containers. I'm going to put my um, Gamasol up here, and inside that bottle, I'm going to put another bottle. I have another, I have a blue bottle I'm going to put inside here, and then I'm going to put my second medium in, and one of the reasons I do that is so I can separate my darks from my lights. I'm going to have a pile for my light medium over in here, and I'm going to have a pile over here for my dark mediums, and I just happen to have a little blue bottle that I've recycled so that I can do that quaintly. Sometimes it feels good to set up your studio, and, and I showed you in the background they have this blue um, material, which is like a tarp or something that like goes over my cabinets so that it doesn't get so busy in here and above. I've placed um, several things. I have a, a scarf here that um, makes the cardboard look better. I have a cardboard here. This is one of those cardboard um, trifolds, and I've screwed it onto a piece of um, masonite. It's like one of those uh, pre-finished Wayne's coating masonite. And then the most important thing is the canvas. I have a 16 by 20 artist quality cotton duck canvas and um, why I say that is because it's lovely to paint on. I try to wait for them to go on sale and I buy as many as I can get at the time and they're great. These they say you don't have to frame. It's gallery wrapped. It has a really um, nice deep edge here. It's one and a half inches thick on the edges. One and a half edge. It's about is the width of the yardstick. So um, it's a really nice piece, but you want to make sure when you get started you stain the edges. The edges should be stained fairly quickly. I put some watercolor paper up here because we're going to talk about things. These are my colors. Those are the colors that I've made for other demonstrations, and um, I'll explain that to you when we go along. And I told you this is nice. This is nice. It's not great, but this is nice. I mean, I think that Claudia and I have come a long way since we started with this whole um, pandemic stuff and now I'm going live. Um, and I'm happy to be here and I'm happy to share this with you. I hope that you understand that I'm giving away my image by going live today with you here. And um, I don't mind if you do, use it for a good cause. So here we are. I'm going live for our art cause. Now I'm making all kinds of noise here. I'm moving things around. I have two carpets underneath me so that I have a cushioned area. I'm standing on a concrete base. I have a um, trash bag hanging from my um, easel here. I have, um, I told you about the color chart. So I also have a piece of scrap paper and then I'm gonna show some of my drawing techniques on that. And I'm gonna use an old brush for most of that because I'm gonna scrape away at it. I'm going to use a blue, a red, and a yellow ochre, and some gel medium, and some Gamasol. Gamasol is an odorless mineral spirit. It helps to thin the paint, and it helps speed up the drying process. And I'm going to make a very strong purple color. I'm using the blue, the red, and the yellow ochre until I get a really strong purple color one that I feel comfortable with beginning. This is the very beginning. This is the furthest thing that you can see in this piece. If we were here, we would say that you see a lot of the tree line in here, but we gotta find the um, area where the light blue is because we don't want the tree line to interrupt the painting process. But I know in here it's really dark and there is absolutely no sky in this area. 
I know that I can fill this in with that color. And that way maybe you can see the color clearly. It's sort of a purple color. I'm, I told you I'm using an old brush. I know that sometimes my techniques and the way that I do things makes artists crazy because I abuse my brush. But remember that there are certain brushes that I abuse and other ones that I don't. So um, some of them can take it. I have some really good brushes that I can beat and I don't lose any of the hairs. You know, it's very frustrating to remove hairs. So every time I take some of this medium, I can pass by and pick up some of um, the pigment. I guess you would call it, it's, it has a wax um, medium in it and it's a blue, a red, and a yellow. And um, I know that this here is the water and I really shouldn't pay attention to where my detail line is and where is my main focus. That's important, I need to look for my main focus and I determined that this area was really dark. But I might even want that to be darker, I would just add more blue. And it's just gonna make a stronger purple. I don't know if the colors are coming clear for you. But I hope that this color is actually the color of my shirt. I'll back up so that you can see that. Um, and maybe we'll use a bigger brush for that, like to demonstrate that in some of the mineral spirits. We can thin that area down. I hope that you can see that this is almost the color of my shirt. If I were to darken it, that's what you would see. But, um... dropped my little wipes. So I told you I'm not using a lot of paper towels, but I am very messy with the reds, especially um, right now I have red all over me. You can subtract some of this color, but you're not going to be able to subtract it all. It is actually like stained, this area. But you know, I could use that to my benefit. I can use that for my shading. I can decide where I, I want my light and where I don't want my light, where I want my darker areas or my lighter areas. But isn't that a nice effect? So um, that's a technique that you can use along the way. But um, we were just talking about the water, and I want to make sure that I don't lose that um, whole water line, because this is a river, so um, way back up in here somewhere. I assume that the water began and then there's some sort of like a bush here and then there's my water line here. You see how blue that is? I'm going to mix my colors. It's very thin right now. It's nice. I'm going to mix my colors together with the red and the yellow and the blue and I get a blackish color. It's a purple, really. Technically, it's the color of my um, turtleneck. I'll turn around so that you guys can see it. But in that waterfall, we have to have different layers of black. There's so much black in there, we want to be able to um, associate the different areas. I'll show you how we can change our blacks up so that we get it really, really dark. And we're going to stop talking about it as a, a black. We're going to start calling it a dark. We're going to put in our uh, waterfall. This is like a wall of um, bricks in here. It's all black um, stone. I'm not sure quite what it is. I'd have to do some more research on this place. But I find it fascinating that this um, mill here was powered by this waterfall in 1850. There's a whole row down in here of rocks. Now, I earlier when we did um, some of my other demonstrations, we talked about basic shapes and how important basic shapes are in drawing or constructing your painting. And today I've brought a piece of watercolor paper so I could demonstrate to you what I'm talking about. Um, I just need to locate my tape. I'll put this back over in here. It's 
so we can leave this paper up here as long as this board doesn't fall down um, I can put a piece of tape on that as well but that's not really that important because we're going to be able to um, make our own colors today and that's what I'm going to do here with you on this piece of paper we can you know come up with a journal in a sense when I was here the sun was really nice it had a nice line across it and that's probably why I was attracted to it was because of the way that the sun was hitting it and I'll back up so that we can discuss it so I have the basic um, outline there on the um, canvas but that's not the drawing that I want to focus on I want to talk to you about the trees we're gonna have this trees thing is it's a big thing we can um, maybe put the, the bush in here and then we can put the grasses. I love that tall grass. It's my um, favorite time of the year to look at it too because it's all blown out. I don't know if any of you uh, see cat and eye tails and all the, the tall grasses are all blown out. So um, I'm having uh, trouble getting that. Claudia's going to have to do something. I'm having trouble getting that bag of uh, whites. My hands are awfully red. I can't get that red off. So that's one of the things that I um, can't stand about oil painting is it, it not only will um, stain your canvas, but it does stain you as well. And I told you I'm very messy. I should be wearing gloves right now. I just got the red. I don't know where it's coming from, but it's all over the place. I want to make sure that it doesn't get on anything else. So this purple here, as it dries, it will look more like the purple on my turtleneck. And that's where we're going to begin our um, painting today. We're going to start that deep. We'll call it deep. Let's see if we can get some more of these wipes. It may be on my paintbrushes. If that's the case, i got to clean each one of them. I'll try not to do it too loud. Yeah, it's on one of the brushes. So it's spread. And um, a lot of people aren't, they don't tolerate the messiness of um, oil paint. And then there are other people that um, have absolutely no problem with it. So here is the problem. It's all over me now. So that's why I keep a trash bag here because um, it's, I fill it, you know, I go through a lot here. All right, so we have our brushes now. Again, I'm back to my design. I want to I want to talk about this tree before we go. Trees are one of those things, you know. Um, I got to get the palette. And again, I probably transferred the red to that as well, but. I'm going to come in here at this bush, and, and the reason why I'm going to focus on this bush is I'm going to use this paint, and I'm going to share it all over the place. There's a lot of blue going on in here, and I want to make sure that I don't forget about that. We talked about like a journaling or whatever. This blue here was so blue that day, I want to make sure that I have it. I want to make sure that I include it. It's sort of like a purple, but it, it's a real, it's a true blue. In some areas it's darker, in some areas it's lighter, and it just depends. But um, in this whole area, I could probably take this whole section and just thin out my paint and um, darken it because it'll, it'll eventually dry enough that I can put more color on it later. So I'm going to say that this area right here is really blue because we can see that in the drawing there. You can see that over in the um, actual photograph, but we do need to draw it, right? We talked about drawing it, I gotta draw it up in here. So I'm gonna use some of this blue for the color that I have already. And I'm gonna show you um, my design here. I've decided that this is 16 by 20 and this is probably, I don't know, maybe a 12 by, uh, I don't know, 17, I would say. I don't know, it's odd. Um, 
I want to decide how high I want this to be. I want my grasses to be up this high. And that's going to be important to show that. Thinking about what needs to be in the painting and how we need to communicate this across to the viewer is what I'm doing really. Sort of designing it, I talked about, remember? We talked about designing it. This would be that plant life there. I think it's a, a bush. Remember, I'm using my, um, probably my cell phone and my um, telephoto on my um, DSR. So here, we know it's really, really, really dark under that bush, but it's bigger than the bush. Just a, a little bit to demonstrate that we want it to be more towards this third of the piece. We talked about dividing it in threes. Let's talk about threes. We'll say that we divided this into threes. So um, would that be even? No. So we would have to move over a little bit. So. I'll make that line a little bit red. Red means stop. So you can do weird things like this. It's not weird, it's, you know, whatever tricks or tips that you use to develop your piece. You know, um, sometimes you might need to change it up. I do things differently because I've had shoulder surgery. I like to stand up and paint for some reason. I have a bad back as well. I don't know, maybe that's what it is, I don't know. So we have our grasses in here. So in here we have the water. And we have a line and it goes across. And then this area here, we want to make sure that it comes over enough that it doesn't fit into that third. So let's bring it over here. So this is a really large piece of dark area. So I might want to just use my larger brush, the 12 that I told you that I have. I'm going to use my 12 and I'm going to make more of the paint. So I don't know why I'm painting on this piece of paper because like technically for real, I might as well just go back to painting it here. So see right now, this blue that was underneath or the purple that I used, it's not mixing, so it had already dried, and it was stained enough that I could um, be able to demonstrate this to you. So in here, these are rocks. These are those shapes that we talked about last time. Um, I talk about basic shapes. Keep drawing, practicing. The more you practice, the more you will understand things, and the better it will be for you to work on. So that's my 3D box. I don't know if you can see that, but later on I'll be sure to post it for you. Um, I'm gonna put my back to you. We have about an hour left. I don't want too much of this red. I want it to be more of a black. So I'm gonna to have to add blue and yellow to it, the red. But I want it to be a different color than the falls over in here. But I can use that same paint and I can move it around and share it in other places. And that painting it really thin like this is going to not only stain the back of the canvas, there's a lot of artists that will come along and they'll take, for instance, one of these noisy little white things and um, they'll just take it and they'll get the thinnest amount of paint that they can get on the canvas. So it's stained this color. But I like to do it so that there's some details going on and I can lead a direction to what the actual piece is going to look like so that each time I add a layer of paint, I'll be able to draw another dimension of the painting. See, it's already starting to like take form. So the blue down in here comes from the sky. 
I need to get some of that blue on there. Up in here. Now my blue is real dark. I want it to be the furthest color so that when I lighten it, it's going to be really nice. But that's too dark. That's almost a black. So I'm going to add more blue. I'm going to stop in this and um, press the button. Okay, so it's very red. We need to get away from that red now. I want to get some more blue in here. This is probably one of my strongest lines. I want to start with the darkest darks. So I'm going to look around for my stronger lines or my, maybe my stronger areas. This is a whole area. You know, this is brick. So we talked about going the direction of things. If I leave a little bit of that red showing through, that'll help in defining the the brick or stone maybe it's a stone it's a real large piece it goes like probably like that I told you at this point I'm more or less like thinking out loud on my design and then there's a whole row of rocks in here but that's like back up in here maybe those are rocks that are shaped like this but they're coming out in this direction so I might want to put them in that direction. I can now use some of that white and maybe I now can add more medium. I can get more of that rock. Sometimes I have to go light, dark, light, dark, light, dark. This is one of those times because I'll be able to get more of the shapes. I'll go dark, real dark. Oh, that's too blue. But that's pretty much to show you the direction of the rocks. That's the direction. There's going to be a darker shadow and then a lighter color on top. We don't know how deep it is. It's not very deep. But it, it, they look like rocks. But when I got closer, they looked more like stone. Like they were cut here. There's a lot of things going on in the quarries in the 1800s. That's when they had the railroad and they could move all these large rocks and then in here we have all that water and it's so blue I'm going to use just the blue that's right on my brush um, my board moves around from time to time it probably noisy but these rocks also come down besides going back they come down that's that 3d box there that I showed you so I can do that too. And I, I haven't cleaned off my brush. I've been using the same brush with the same paint on it for some time now. Um, just moving it around and I'm gonna get a nice quiet dark area. It's not dark enough though. There's a lot of black in there, um, but I don't wanna lose the shapes that are in here because that's where the waterfall comes up. Again, see, my, my lack of color doesn't really mean anything. The fact that I'm not using a lot of paint doesn't really mean anything because I can start to define it anyway using a real small amount. I want this to be higher up. I can raise it. See, so we're going to raise it up a bit. I like it to go higher, and I need some of this paint. There's so much of that paint up there, I could use that down in here. Like this dark, dark color. That's what I need for in here. But we raised it up, remember? We brought it up to here. I need to come back and get more of it. I could just keep, you know, staining it as I go along. My lines get straighter. See, I'm pulling it and um, giving the waterfall direction. Sometimes the waterfall comes up and sometimes it splashes down, but it always has a nice straight line here. That very straight line is gonna require some real white in here. White is a long drying color, so we're gonna stay away from the white till the end as much as possible. Sometimes I have to pull out my whites while we're here so that you at home can see it. But, um, 
to that nice green. It's a nice green. It's like a Kelly green. It's red, yellow, ochre, and blue. The um, river actually comes back over in here, but there are some of those like bushes here that are real nice dark green, like a Kelly green. I like that color. And I'm using the dark, dark colors first. I can um, put that in here, but I don't want to forget about my sky. I keep forgetting. Remember we talked about not using so much white. This might be one of those times where I use some white. But I'm going to use a lot of the medium. And all the color that's on my brush. Because that'll give it more of a natural blue. Later on we can lighten some of the areas. They call it marking in the area of the sky sky marking. We can do that later, but right now we're just going to get whatever's on our brush and we're going to get that stain on the edges of this piece. Remember, the edges are important at this time. You know, um, in the beginning, you don't want your paint to be too off. It's very hard to paint in the edges after you started. And here it's very dark. So we'll take some of this color here and we can put it down in here. Maybe some more. We can maybe show some of that rock. There's like a, a shade here in the rocks. It's really dark. Remember, if I keep sharing my colors and I keep adding layers, eventually my drawing will begin to um, show itself. Because it, the layers. And here are the grasses. There's a lot of dark area. There's more dark area here. And maybe a whole line of dark in here. So I talked about sharing the color. I've been moving that color around so much. I'm able to fill in a lot more areas. We need to draw those trees. I'm going to just flip this upside down. Those trees. While we're um, waiting on the trees, I'll throw in some of this soften the area a little bit and continuously stay in this area here. All this will dry fast. Not dry like completely while we're here today, but it will dry enough that I can adhere a new color to this. But we're going to go to the tree and then come back to this and it should be dry enough to start another color. I want to take my trees down to the simplest form, but I need to think of values and I need to think of like how can I show you what kind of a tree this is or how can I demonstrate to you how this tree is. Well, one way to do it is to draw it in simple shape. And another way would be to draw it in its values. Um, where we determine this tree is here, you're not going to see, let's just draw all the lines. That way we can see what we're working with. I have a very dark color, and again, I told you I might need to come back and lighten some of this, but in the interim, we have a very dark area here. And down in here. So I'm going to just keep picking up my colors and um, draw in all my darks until I don't have any more color left. I can come back and make some more. I'm using a very thin coat of it right now so that I can draw this out. I want to make sure that um, I raise this up a little bit. We talked about that here. 
every time I draw on it, I keep forgetting that I raised it. So I'm going to find my darkest colors here now, and I'm going to put that big block of dark here. This is what's underneath the tree there, or it's like a bush. Put that back in here. Right now I can actually, if I use no medium, I actually have enough medium on the canvas to use no more medium, and that's what I mean about like one-fifth. I've not totally figured out the science of it, but there are times where I use more than others, and there are times where I use less than others. But that lighting there is really important to me, so I want to make sure that I get that in here now. I'm going to actually pull out a lighter color over my darker color. But at the same time, I can move it around and get some of that um, leaf action that I need in here. It had a really nice glow to it from the light, and that's what I want to make sure that I convey to you in my story here. My art is like a story. Um, it's, I don't know, it, it says something, or I hope that it says something to you. I hope that you enjoy it. I hope that you learn something and that you take from this something good because um, I told you I'm coming live for that purpose. I hope that I can help. I haven't always been able to do um, painting because I've had problems with my hands, but there are other things that I've done over the years to compensate um, or to do my own art. I'm using a, a round number two brush and I'm slightly dabbing it to get some of the back color we talked about the back color I still want to focus on the back color even though I'm adding some of the lighter colors I can switch my brush from time to time now so that I can use a light color and a dark color or a light color dark color um, I see there's an awful lot of light in here so I might want to leave that there and make sure that it's there. This is all part of the grasses, so I could probably go to the grass now with this color. It's sort of a yellow ochre, a red, and some white, but very little of the red. I told you that red is very strong. It's a true red. If I throw, like, I'm going to talk about throwing. Um, I'm not really throwing. I have a very um, nice... It's a filbert, and it's a um, number two. I'm gonna put some of those grass lines in here. That way I can drag this dark line through. I'm using like a pink. It's, I don't even know if it's a pink. It's more of like a salmon or a rose color. It's yellow ochre, some red, and some white. And I want the dark color, but I also want to be able to make it pop. So this is one of my pop colors in my layering. I'm going to do lots of layers in here. I like these tall grasses. There's also like a hill of them over in here, but it's not very defined. So you don't need much more than just the solid color here. But this color you see is in here, but it's orange in that color, or reddish color and that. So um, that scene here as well, there's like a hill here of it. I don't like the red. I told you it's very strong, so I can use this pile of red to move my colors around. Like for instance in here there's more of a tree line color. I can put some of that red in here. This is very impressionistic. I've said before that if you were to classify what I do, I would say that it's basically a contemporary, um, modern, I don't know, abstract, because I'm not following all the rules from the school. That's the difference. Um, but that's okay, because I'm doing what I can do to help. Um, and I hope that I'm helping coming live for the pandemic.
If I continuously go over this with the colors that I'm using, all of them, I would say, is in the grass um, somewhere or another. So um, I can't use such a small brush at this point. I could get lost in my details. So I should switch to my 12. I don't want to get lost in my details, but I didn't want to like ignore that section. But in here, it's very green. It's closer to me, it's redder, and further, it's bluer. So I want to take some of this reddish, yellowish color, with more yellow ochre, and move it over in here. And I talked about getting a bigger brush. It'll make a world of difference. Takes away the edges, too. There's no real strong edges right now. They basically know where the colors are going by the shapes. There's a lot of shapes, very shapely piece. But I, I'm gonna lose some of my sky, but that's okay, because later on I can block it in. But um, it doesn't. Staining, this is like the first layer. If you can see the white somewhat behind it, I know that I'm gonna go at it with um, more color later on. But right now I can get a lot of that staining in here. I like that color green for in here. It's sort of an olivey green. I just took some of the blue and mixed it in with the red and the yellow ochre. But it's more blue further away, so I need to make it a little bit lighter. Lighter and... Lighter and bluer. And then it gets bluer and lighter. I'm using the lemon yellow in the back and then in the front I'll use more of the red. And some more white. If I go light, dark, light, dark, light, dark, I'll get some sort of dimension. I don't know if you see that that's thick. Back there it's very thick. So I can go light, dark, light, dark. Light. And those grasses. And that bush. See here it's really hard because it hasn't dried yet. I don't want to touch that area if I can help it. But I can keep moving the colors around. And here there's like a, a lighter green back in here. Not a lot though. And I want to show some sort of direction. Everything should go in a direction. So in here, it has a reflection. There's bushes here. And then there's a big tree up above. We already know what color that tree is. It's uh, right there in the front and right there in the back. So bluer and darker. It's very dark. I don't want to put too much of it dark because those are like branches that go over. But I like that color, so I remember that color here. It's sort of a navy green, and then it gets really navy green at the edges. And that's when I told you I'm not going to focus too much on that because I don't want to um, go over the orange too much. But I just want to show that the tree does some sort of direction here. Using a big brush, I can get some of this um, depth or direction. I can go lighter with the yellow ochre in the front. It is pretty awesome. It goes right off the canvas. So we're going to pretend that, you know, it's sort of rounded on the top because that'll just help. Sometimes the picture doesn't always um, lend a perfect hand. You might have to do your own alterations. So here I would say that it's a little more round and I might fix that when I go to my sky. But right now I can um, move that green around. 
and get some other areas. Again, going lighter, I know that there's like yellow ochre lighter and then there's a lemon yellow lighter. And the lemon yellow should be further in the back <coughs> or on the top of the, for, the top would be further as well. But that's like a birch, um, a small birch would do that well. Oops. So that again goes over the top. But I don't want to lose what's going on in here. See all the branches coming straight down? That's kind of a, a cool thing. And then there's like a ziggy in here. So I'm not going to be able to do too much of that because of the colors are going to blend in together, but I can get the gist of it and come back to it layer by layer. I can um, decide here again where I want my waterline. Now I'm, I was I was worried about going like uphill, but I kind of have to give you some sort of a direction here. Remember we talked about adding white. I don't like to add white, but if we need to do it here for demonstration purposes, we'll do it. I want to make sure that you can see it clearly. There's a, um, a thing here. My water level is here again. Now, we talked about darkest first. It doesn't always have to be 100%, but it's good to have some sort of staining. See how the background colors that I put on there is actually showing something here now? Again, I don't want to use too much of the white, but um, this line here is really going to say something. There's a reflection in here of the um, grasses and the trees in the background. I'm going to put that in here, but it's sort of a peachy color, which is yellow ochre and red and white. But I can use that same color and just go up over onto here. Some of it's turning green, that's okay. That's why I start with a, a low amount of color so I can blend it nicely. I need to turn that color dark to go around here where that reflection was. It's really a dark line. And then the bush. That's a really dark line. And then over in here, it's really dark. Like right on the water here. See, the paint is dried enough that when I'm pulling the paint through, it's not necessarily moving too much. There's a nice green bush here. Now that has like a yellowy, so that would be yellow and yellow ochre, I guess. You might just try that here. I'm not necessarily going to stay with these colors. I'm just going to try some of them here. Because again, see the white coming through? I'm not really at the edge of my um, painting yet. I'm still building on my layers. More red up in here. Red up in here. So, um, this will be more like a foresty green, except where the light's coming in. I want to keep that there, but I can darken it with some red and some blue and yellow ochre. So if I go light, dark, light, dark, light, dark, I'm going to start to show some dimension here too. Should be nice. It's important to um, have your piece say something. I don't know. 
I hope that my paintings have sort of a feeling when I'm done with them, or um, that they say something strongly, or that whatever I've done. Oh, well, we can put some of those rocks in here. I don't know if you guys see it, but there are some rocks in here. And I like the way the direction, it kind of goes around here. Like, and then it's very dark, that's too green, so it needs more red and blue. Yeah, so that'll help with the rocks later on because it's kind of dark in here. But it's almost brown. You can almost see a brown and then it turns into a black. When it goes back over in here, it turns into like a purpley black color. And that'll help you see this um, bush a little bit better because I can bring up my rocks. We could paint this painting rather fast. I'd say four to six hours. And you say, well, this is only two hours long. Well, um, I hope that I helped you along somehow today. But you can always check out our educational programs on YouTube or on my website at artistslarasanadella.com or the Blackstone Valley Art Association. And um, I hope that you are inspired. Um, this is a really hard time for people. I know that the costs are difficult. There are many tips and tricks. You know, look them up online. There are a lot of artists going live right now. I saw a lot of musicians that I was even interested in. Um, I saw that Tony Bennett is a um, painter now. Um, pretty exciting stuff going on out there. And um, people are, are helping art stay alive, especially fine arts. It's a, it's a tough Fine arts is a tough field. It's so expensive to buy supplies. I'm standing in front of the light right now. I'll move over so that you can see later on, but I need to get in this little corner here um, and get some of this rock color. Remember, my rocks go like this. So why did I do it earlier? You know, um, you can't even see it now because later on the layers will make a difference. They'll show depth in the painting. darker colors over in here. Switch up your brushes from time to time too so that you use different um, strokes. It'll help uh, your painting as well. You want to help your painting along. That's what you're doing here. Today we're helping this um, dam along. It's the Bliss Street Dam in Munson, Massachusetts, formerly um, belonging to the Omega Company and then the Wool and Cotton Company prior to. It was used to store wool and it was used to um, produce some um, products. Uh, the company was abandoned due to the hazardous spill into the river, which was cleaned up in 2005. And it's not really um, open to the public, but it's not like closed either. There's no, um, there's fencing around the mill, but not around the dam. So you can um, see this clearly from the road and it's absolutely beautiful. And it, I imagine, you know, another time that it flowed really well, but now in um, the drought that we've had lately, you know, it's not uh, flowing like I can imagine it, it does normally. So back in here we have a stripe of this white, white color. And then our grasses again. We can keep coming back to our grasses. I told you every bit of color, every little color, will create more depth. Might be something that drags your eye to the back here. We want that little bush to rise. We want the other reddish bush to rise. And we want to get the sky back in there. But I can use this paint. You know, this is sort of reflecting in the water. 
And then in here maybe I can use some of that color. And that'll make it thinner, which will help it dry back in here. See, the green is almost dry from that bush, that it's hard to move around. I told you I'm using a different brush now so I can get different strokes. Well, now is the time to begin getting some of those strokes that I talked about because I have all this paint that I need to move around and it will help in getting it darker and lighter and darker and lighter and moving it around. I need to go um, and find out what time we have. I um, want to see what my screen looks like. I hope that you guys are following along and enjoying yourselves today. If there's anything that I can do, please feel free to contact me. I can use some of the colors. I told you that the colors are everywhere. 45 minutes. We have about 45 minutes, and I'm going to take a few minutes for a break. Here's your chance to get up, walk around. Make sure you stretch. It's important to stretch. When you're painting, especially like, for instance, here I have this um, palette on my arm. It's hard to keep yourself in one position for a long period of time. And it's important to remember to stretch. I, I remember working in a medical facility and, and they found stretching to be very important for their employees and they focused on it. Um, I want to um, leave you with a little something here before I leave. I want to get some of this color on here so that we can come back and talk about it before I leave on this break of mine. See, this is my obsession now. I should just be walking away, but I can't do it yet until I get that, there we go, color on there. All right, so I'll be right back. You guys take a break. See you in five.
stand back I can start to see things. I don't know if you guys see what I see, but I see it's smaller. I need to um, make the waterfall a little bit smaller. But do you see there's like a layer of rock? So I'm gonna um, stand back and look at it as I set up my mics and everything again. I took a five minute break. I haven't been able to like figure out how to put on anything um, during the break, but Eventually we'll get to that. My hope is that I can play a video or something while um, you're all waiting for me to come back from a break. I'll make sure that I have all my brushes. I know that I have dropped one of them. That would be uh, five brushes. My goal is not to overuse or abuse anything now that we're during the pandemic and it would be wise for me to conserve. But sometimes I don't know how to do things without using certain products. I don't know if any of you run into that, but um, for instance here, subtraction would work out really well. We can subtract the um, paint and we can get more of the white area or we could darken some of the area and um, I know that um, I want to I show some sort of a shelf there for the rocks. I could darken the area or I could lighten the areas. In here there's a lot of lighter areas. I could do that now with the white because I know that I'm not going to finish this today, that I'm going to get back to this later on and I have an opportunity now to focus on some of that wave action. I can come here and um, put in some of the lighter colors. I told you that I'm, I'm sort of going to give you an impression of this. I'm not going to give you the exact, so I'm going to move in my waves um, sort of randomly, putting in strokes. I'm going to focus on the direction of the water because that might help you understand where I was at the time when I took this image. So I'm going to... Um, sort of give you some direction. At the same time, I don't know if you see, but it's going to start to um, show form. And that will help, again, show you or communicate to you what I saw when I was there. And I have a lot of the medium on the board or on the canvas, um, so I can mix it in. This is a board and this is the canvas, but um, I want to I want to talk about a couple of things besides um, following the direction here. This is like giving a wood grain, you know. Um, and if I come back here later on, I let that dry. Later on, I come back later. I want to put at least three coats of color, but I don't have a lot of time. I told you I don't want to um, spend too much on the water here but it is a it's a big focus because it, it's the water that comes down over here i'm just using some straight white now because at some point i'm going to give it some direction here very thin white paint with the uh, um, gel medium in it and i'm very lightly touching it so that i give it some sort of 
form or direction. And we talked about how maybe it needs to come up a little bit higher here for the rocks. And um, I noticed that when I stood back from it. It's important to stand back from your painting and not be right on top of it. I'm very on top of this here. Only because I'm demonstrating to you, normally I'll be standing painting and I'll be quite a few feet away from it. I can um, get back from at least five to six feet from here and I can stare at this and I can start to um, see where I, you know, made a mistake or where I need to work on next or whatever. I don't want to be right on top of it, in other words. But um, if you want really straight lines, one way to do it is to use your hand as a guide. You can drag your brush down with your fingers, guiding it straight, say, like this. I don't know if you at home can see this or have ever been taught this, but um, I love it. Use the rest of your hand to, to guide your paint. And that may be one of the reasons why I put the falls usually where I put the falls in my paintings because I might want to be able to guide myself. I have very unsteady hands. I don't know if you can see that again. But I don't want to put too much focus on this area or too much color because unfortunately this white that I'm using is not going to dry very fast and I want to move this painting along. But I can reuse that color when I'm putting in some of the elements. These are like elements to the piece. There's a lot of design here. There's, if I just follow the lines with the colors, or not colors, I mean, some of this almost looks white, but that underpainting that's here, the blue is really nice. It, it'll help. And again, you know, you could do this all day long until the cows come home, but at some point you got to understand that your painting needs to be walked away from because you can't put too much detail into it. You um, are only showing your impression of the painting, of this image, and this is even an impression of what I saw that day. The lighting there was a lot brighter than it is here, but um, I can get that across in the paint. But this can give me a, um, a basic image to follow. Following it like it's a map. You know, I'm going from piece to piece, shape to shape, color to color. But it, it's going to make mud if I work on it too much. I might need to let it rest. So this will rest and then I can come back over in here. But I keep telling you about this tree thing that I want to get into telling you about. But I want to make sure that I have enough time to go into the tree discussion. The tree is going to be a black, brown, so I'm going to use a dark blue, the red, and the yellow ochre and get a real dark brown. And um, I'm going to draw a basic tree. And then I'm going to tuck the tree. Let me grab my uh, papers here. I'm going to tuck the tree in this corner. So the, you can't see a whole lot of the branches, but we're going to add some of these branches in here. And we're going to do it basically. We're going to bring it down and decide where would our trunk be. You can't see it, but it's back in here. There's going to be some um, leaves over in here. So we don't want to see the trunk too much, but we want to see a little bit of it maybe shining through. Some of that reddish, brownish color. Because there's some sort of a light happening here. It's hitting the grass over there, though. So this area is very dark. But at the same time, I can keep working on my leaves. Every time I pick up a green, I can work on my leaves. Because this here bush has a lot happening. It has a lot of light. There's light of maybe four or five different greens. So I'm going to spread around um, some of that lighter lemony yellow for the background and then I'm going to get darker and warmer in the front. 
But I wanted it to have some simple branch lines. I gave it sort of like a V. The rest will be done in, in greens, like different areas. And like I said, dark light, dark light, dark light, dark light, light dark. So in the background, it'll be lighter, it'll be lemon yellow and uh, the green that we got going on. But I don't want too much focus on that right now. I want to get back over in here. This is very nice light yellow. But I have to give it some background color so it pops. What I'm working on now is giving it some background color so it pops. But I don't want to totally lose that lemony color here. I can steal the paint. I'm sort of stealing it because I see there's a whole bunch of extra paint over in there and I can steal it and put it in over here. It's got to be lighter though. Steal some of that white. It's sort of like sculpting. I mean, I could go at this, like I said, forever, but I would say another couple of hours on this, two hours maybe. I'll be able to get all the detail that I want to give you. Not fully, but enough. And um, in here, it's very purple. Remember, my black is a purple. It's a very dark purple for this grass here. This here is really green, it's much lighter. So that would be that lemony yellow for the background. And there's those little tiny branches, little leaves up in here. I can do this really fast with the tip of the brush because it's a nice little round tip. This is really great um, to have experienced. Sometimes they say that I don't get good images, but I get a good experience. This was a nice experience of a, like a birch in the background here. But I'm gonna like give it a little exaggeration. I'm gonna exaggerate some of these greens here so that they pop more in the back and the light was hitting that. Just above the grass. And see, it doesn't matter what color is really underneath, it doesn't matter because it's like all there, so I can pull this all in. Move some of that lighter color around here. See, the color underneath is dry enough now that this lighter color actually shows up. It takes a while, but like in, you know, four to six hours, you can paint something like this nicely. With not a lot of detail, but, you know, getting your point across. I like that um, real dark color in here. I want to make sure I get that. It actually has like a red where the rocks are. I don't know if they're like a brick, maybe. They're big, though. They're about granite size. I don't know, they're black. Stone. Real dark, but it's almost a red. And then they're an outline, you'll see in a second. The outline on that is really like a rich black. It's almost like a red. It's weird. It might be some form of algae or something, I don't know. Remember, I was standing far away enough that it just gave me a feeling or like this is the just of it. If we were like describing it, this would be the just of it. I don't want to lose that water line there, that's pretty awesome. And this tree kind of comes out over the water line. I have a lot of that dark color in here. I can move it around and 
steal it, borrow it, whatever you want to call it. Move it around. I don't want it to get too mucky, so if the color starts to get too mucky, I move on. I say, okay, that's it for that area, move on. And we can come back over in here because it's darker. There's a lot of leaf action, which is good because I'll be able to get like the greens and then come back and get the darker colors at the very end. You can put in a real dark color. So any questions before we end today? Any comments? Anything that you want to talk about? Here's your chance. We'd love to hear from you. There's another area I have to say, leave it alone, I have to move over. shadow from underneath. It's like a square. So I'm spreading and I'm adding. I'm making my really dark color here. Because I want to eventually have this be almost black, but it's sort of like I said, a purple for me. But um, I gotta have other colors in here to help assist it along.
and giving it some direction, some movement. At the same time, I hope to be adding something to the canvas or to the story or whatever you want to call it. I'm going to do the direction of the water again and the reflection of the grass. There's a reflection on the grass, but I may not be able to get that to the very end. Sometimes I'm lucky and I can get it by just like dragging it like that. But other times uh, it takes a while. Layers. Patience. That's what I say about oil painting. Patience. But I have patience. I'm sort of sculpting, I don't know if you noticed, but I'm putting on layers. It's sort of like sculpting in a sense. But it'll help define areas here. And that's blue. If I add just a little bit of red and some yellow ochre. Look at that gray like color that's here. It goes along the water. It's redder here, and then in the back it's bluer. It's very light in here, almost white. Maybe I'll add some white. See how the sun, sometimes a little bit of drama is not a, not a bad thing. You know? So proud of my little Daniel and his drama. I remember when he was little. So yeah, on my light now, adding that little drama, I like that. So I'm gonna back up and look at it. I don't wanna go too light here, but maybe over in here I can. Down in here, remember the reflection. We don't wanna forget about our reflection. We wanna make sure it kind of matches. So um, a little bit lighter in here. A little warmer up in here, a little cooler back in there. So over in here, it's very dark. Dark, 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 dark. Most black. Or my black is a real purple white color. I like that dark color there, but this is a real blue. This water here has to be like a real strong blue. Let's go from here and cut it all the way across. Again, if I put pressure down and I go really fast, I can get a fairly straight line. And here it's really thick. I like that thick. It's brick, I told you, or stone or something, but it's large pieces. So I'll do some lighter blue and some darker blue. That's what it looks like kind of with a light and some red. But if you keep putting the layers on, it'll develop. Eventually you'll develop something. I mean, I don't know if there's wrong, but there might not be right, you know? I don't know. I think um, everybody's interpretation of art is different and it's okay. Follow the rules though and learn them and then see where you go. Some of this stone thing needs a defining line so I'm going to go a little bit more brown in here to define it. Then I get a real dark blue again because underneath here it's really dark but the blue, dark, dark blue. Green. This is really dark. One way to make that really dark area show is to go really light. Let's make a real light blue now. Make this really light blue. It'll help to 
dark show. If you do the blue, the light, light blue. This is where that light comes back, light, dark, light, dark, light, dark. Still giving it some direction. Don't lose your direction. Your GPS for that today. For maps. So there's like little levels in the waterfall. I'm gonna put little levels in there. A little bit of level here, a level there. might not be light enough. See, sometimes I'm not opposed to putting the white in there, but like in a project like this for you to see it. But it takes forever to dry. I hate it, you know. But I'll be all right. Try to push it along. So my color choices are a little dramatic and that's what I hope that I can show here. It's a, it's a pretty powerful waterfall, I'm sure it's more powerful in the um, more water, but here there isn't too much water in this area here. My buff and my blue. So my sky now, I, I um, could definitely use a larger brush for that. Um, I want that to reflect the same color down in there. So I wanna make sure that I at least put a little bit of it up in here. Not so sure where it's gonna go in the later layers, but I wanna make sure that enough of it is up here that you can see that it matches down in here. Cause this is more of like a reflection in the water. I don't want to lose my little tree leaves there, so I won't go too close. Because later on I can spot it in there. Just dab it in there, you know. Not to forget my edges. I'm going to pull in some of that color. And I remember I said that tree on the top, I want it to be a little more rounder, but I would like to lower it a little bit as well. Just so a tip of the white can show through. Not necessarily the white, like the direction of the sky is horizontal, not vertical. So I'm going to come back and I'm going to repair some of this area by dragging the paint in the direction. Like I told you, think of like wood grain, the direction of the wood grain in a sense. Okay, so that looks like we're about done for today. I'm going to um, slap my uh, signature on now. And if you guys have any questions, feel free to contact me. Remember, I'm just an email away going virtual during the pandemic here in Brookfield, Massachusetts. Laura O. Senadella. Happy day. Happy Saturday. Make it a great day.